Hi, I wanted to do a little video on Tormax uh, Passive Probe. Really good value unit. Um, 220 odd dollars or something. It's really amazing um, price for a, a good piece of technology in theory. There's a fantastic uh, series of pages on PathPilot that allow you to set it up central and allow you to quickly um, centralize over uh, rectangular or circular pockets or bosses. Um, this, this looked brilliant to me. I thought I've got to get one of these. Um, it's uh, very quick and user friendly and, and if it's accurate it'll be a great system. I had a look online and I could see a very good video from John Grimm's Mo and uh, Daniel Rogue of Tormac. John Grimm's got Mo of Grimm's Mo Knives. Um, showing the internals of how it's constructed and that was very useful. I pulled it apart and cleaned it out. It had a bit much grease in it which was affecting the repeatability. I um, got that sorted and, and now it's repeating really well. Um, so I just wanted to dig a bit deeper and see well how accurate is this. You know, uh, um, Quite often we use instruments and we don't actually check them to see how accurately that, how accurate they can be. Um, so First of all, if, if you don't have a good understanding of, of these probes, I recommend that you first watch uh, Daniel Rogge's uh, Tormark video, YouTube video, and John Grimsmo's video, and read the uh, Tormark manual on it. There's an article in uh, PathPilot chapter and an article in Accessories, accessories um, and then perhaps this will be an interesting little video to watch. Okay, what I want to talk about here specifically is the Passive Probe Flex, Mechanical Flex, before the electrical connection takes place. Now as far as I can see, this isn't mentioned in this Tormac specifications. They talk about swing arm position repeatability of 0.013, spherical accuracy of 0.05, position tolerance of tip of 0.013 that would be the total error but the, there's no mention of the flex be, uh, mechanical flex on contact before electrical contact takes place and I'm, it's possible that this has been overlooked um, so what I'll do here is I'll just automatically probe that face oh, first of all I better explain what I'm doing I've got a dial indicator connected to the tip it's currently clear of the back. I can view behind the uh, ruby sphere and see, when it's very close to the part see the light gap and check that the pressure from the dial indicator is not enough to flex the stylus. Okay so we're not concerned about the spring pressure of the dial indicator affecting this accuracy setting because it is, it is not moving at more than perhaps a micron or something. So what I'm going to do now is probe in until the stylus, the, the passive probe contacts on that flat surface um, just to establish zero. So go to the probe page and <coughs> probe that surface. Now at that point um, it will have set according to the diameter that I've put on the offsets page. So let's go to offsets. This is tool number 99 and that's the, that's the probe and I've set it at three millimeters which by micrometer measurement is the stylus ball diameter. Okay so let's go back now. This is a bit long-winded but hopefully you'll see the point of it in a minute. Let's go back now to the probe. Now this dial indicator will measure the movement of the, the mechanical flex before the contact point. So we have now established the position relative to the three millimeter entered in the tool table. So if I now jog slowly back in towards that vertical face until it contacts it, I'll get a, a measure of the discrepancy between the two. So I'll start jogging now. So you can see 
there is nine hundredths of a millimeter approximately. Uh. Once the dial indicator starts to move, that's registering mechanical contact. Or once the jogging stops, that's registering electrical contact. Uh. At that point, the probe has tripped, and we can see that the setting on the Y DRO is almost exactly 1.5 millimeters, 1.498, which is half of the setting in the tool table, um, the radius of the three millimeters. Now this is a problem because it's not allowing for the flex. The flex is actually, um, on average, um, quite a few thou, you know, um, say nine hundredths is uh, three thou approximately. Um, so that needs to be allowed for uh, when you're entering the diameter in the tool table. Um, and it isn't mentioned in the uh, specifications, which is a far bigger factor than the, the smaller amounts of errors that are mentioned. Uh, so uh, I will bring this to, to the attention of Tormac to see how they respond. Of course, this doesn't matter so much when you're using the probe to find the center of the work, because you're touching on one side and you're touching on the other side um, and you're just finding the central position so those errors theoretically will um, be balanced on each side but there's another problem here the way the probe works it has a tripod or a three arm swing arm internally it needs to have three because three is a balanced contact uh, uh, geometry um, but you're moving the x y axis in uh, 90 degrees, so there's uh, four directions there. So depending on the rotary orientation of the um, probe, where it is here, um, you're going to be tripping that uh, tri-swing tri arm, the, the 120 degree angle, at various angles relative to the X Y movement. Sometimes you'll be striking in between the two uh, swing arms where it's pivoting away in the internal contacts and sometimes you'll be striking off to one side. And this is unfortunately a big problem. Uh, I've just realized that if I traverse in um, here we get seven hundredths in that position. But it's rotated a bit. Now we're getting nine hundredths. Now we're already getting six hundredths. Now we're getting quite a bit more. So you can see that the error is varying between um, between the mechanical connection and the electrical connection of between six hundredths and point one, you know that's roughly a little more than two thou to nearly four thou. Uh, that's an inherent problem. I don't see how we can get around that. I don't think it's that this unit is faulty. It's just the way it's designed. It doesn't really allow you to position accurately. Um, you, you can probably position within that variation of extremes which is about four hundredths of a millimeter or uh, nearly two thou um, but that's going to be the limiting factor. For centralizing positioning, for positioning of the end face you can uh, put into the tool table the uh, diameter less that flex amount but of course that varies so it seems like we're limited to an accuracy on this factor um, of plus or minus a thou around about two thou or around about four or five hundredths of a millimeter okay just to summarize this uh, issue on the passive probe um, in case it's still a little confusing. Um, the error that I'm talking about between 
mechanical contact and electrical contact um, is a flex factor of um, uh, between about two and four thou in, in inches and um, and it varies according to the rotary position um, so if you're finding the center of of a bore say the path pilot software very quickly touches off and does the maths and finds the middle. Brilliant, you can find a whole series of whole centers like this. You could have a different work offset for each one and and so you can return to those positions. That's great. Um, and the error is not quite so bad in this situation when you're probing the middle of a hole or a boss because the error is balanced between one side and the other. And the only real problem you've got is the to, because of this rotary 120 versus 90 angle issue you've got a small error there of between 1 and 2 thou that can't really be allowed for. Um, on the other hand if you're going to use the probe to touch off on the outside surface um, then you've got the full error of the, of the flex of that 2 to 4 thou that needs to be allowed for in the tool table diameter can't just measure the ball and see that it's set at three millimeters and enter that amount. You need to allow for that 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 error, probably somewhere between the two extremes. In my case, about three thou on the radius or six thou on the diameter needs to be built into that diameter on the tool table. Hopefully, that makes sense to you.